Hey ladies, Cassidy here. Um, so I've gotten a few comments um, and questions on how I do my art journal pages. Um, so I thought I would uh, just play today and show you guys my process. Um, so I'm going to start, I use a lot of book pages in my background um, because it's really fun and adds a little bit of dimension. Um, and how I apply that, I use some matte medium. This is my first time recording how I do my art journal pages, so if I'm in the way at all, it's because I, I'm not focusing on how to do this. And I have my cart backwards, so I can see what I need. Sorry guys. I'm just looking for my... So let's start this. So I'm just going to start adding some book pages, um, some torn up book pages to my page. I'm just going to play and see where we go. Um, I never know what I'm creating until I have completely finished my project because um, I just kind of randomly throw stuff on. Otherwise, I, I don't really get inspiration until I start slapping some paint on the paper. Um, you guys might hear my kids come through a few times. They are I am a stay-at-home mom, so I kind of do things around them. So if I have to stop at all, I apologize. And I'm going to try not to let it be like completely quiet the entire time I'm doing this. And this matte medium, um, you can pick a matte medium at an art supply store, um, but it is kind of expensive. I picked up this matte medium um, just to see what the hike was all about from Walmart for $4, and it works great. So I've never had any issue using the cheaper stuff. So eventually I might get the good stuff, but right now... This is good. All right, so I've applied my book pages. Um, I'm going to uh, pause this for a second. I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll come back and show you where I go from there. All right, ladies, I'm back. Um, and it might be a different angle. I had to readjust my cart because it was backwards, and I couldn't do what I needed to do because, well, I'm used to a system. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply gesso over the book pages um, for a couple of reasons. One, the matte medium, um, not much is going to stick to that. Um, so I need to put something on there to uh, catch the paint. Also, I don't want um, the words to be like super prominent. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of gesso over top. Like so. And this is going to help it come through a little bit, um, but not be the most prominent thing on the page. Um, another thing that I really like to do um, is, and I say um a lot apparently, and I've noticed that every single video I make, I say um a lot, so pardon my ums. Alright, so some of the wording I just want to show a little bit more, so I take a baby wipe, and I just kind of wipe away some of the gesso that I used, just to make it a little more prominent, and that, that wording will stick out a little bit more. There's no rhyme or reason for it, that's just 
how I do it. All right, and then I'm going to add some background stenciling. And I do this most of the time when the page is dry. Um, and I, my stencils are very used. I like it that way. It gives the page a little bit more of a grungy look. This, you will tell that this is probably my favorite stencil. Um, I use this part a lot. Um, this time I'm actually going to be using some modeling paste that I just picked up recently and I want to check it out. Oh, well, I'm actually going to put that on top. Sorry. This is what happens when you create with no rhyme or reason. I'm actually just going to use my sprays to start out. So I think I'm going to do some bright colors. Alright, so we're just going to, that's what I do, spray, and that is clogged. Lovely. And then I normally flip it over and I pat it on the next page because I don't like to waste anything. Alright, I need to clean this because it's not spraying like it's supposed to. And then I also like I'll rub the paper on top because I refuse to waste any material, any paint, any anything. And this I don't have a jelly plate, so a lot of people call this um, jelly prints or mono printing. So I, that's what I do, and I kind of create those as I go along, and I use them in other projects. And this is still not working, and it's frustrating me. So I use that color and then I'm also going to let's add a little bit of that. And again, we're gonna put it in there and use a bit of ink. And you'll see I am the messiest artist. I feel like the messiest artist is the person who most inspiration so I'm very very messy when I do my art all right so that's how I start and now I am going to um, pat some of my color um, just to pick it up a bit. sorry for the arms guys sorry I'm gonna work about it I'm trying to stop that you guys can hear my kids in the background and I just like to pick up a little bit of the color. Again, this is another way that I make my jelly prints. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to have to put you on hold for just one moment. I have a daughter who needs me. One second. Second video um, so that they don't get too long because YouTube won't let me upload anything that's longer than 15 minutes. So I decided to just start, all up, start a new video. Um, so here we are. We're left. This is where I left off. Get your book pages, um, and then I do my sprays. So now I'm going to find a color that I want, and I'm going to cover my entire page with it. So I think I'm going to use... I think neon green will look really cool. And there's so many ways to apply um, your color to your page. Obviously, you can paint it on. Um, one moment, ladies. Put that away. All right. Sorry, ladies. All right. Um, so the way I'm going to do this is one of my favorite ways to apply paint. Um, I don't remember who I learned this from. It was in a group. in a different group for a different challenge and the challenge was to use like um, a credit card or something uh, something similar like with a flat edge and to scrape the paint which that's what 
that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to grab up my paint and I'm going to slide it onto my paper here. I like the uneven results that this gives you um, when you do it like this. And I don't have enough paint. So I'm just gonna... And some of you guys saw me do this in the challenge, the Take 3 challenge for this week on um, Mind, Body, and Soul Facebook group. But I did, I just padded the pages together instead of scraped the paint. So I'm just going to continue to scrape. And then you can see, like, my background colors are starting to fade into the background, kind of a grungy look, which I love. That's most of my work. Grab it. And I try not to have any white space. Uh, I will have probably a little bit of white space at the end, but it'll work out because I there's so many other layers that I'm going to add to this that there will be plenty of room for more color. Right. So there is that. And the really cool part about doing applying paint this way is this is dry. Like, it, it dries so quickly because you're basically scraping off all of the wet paint and you're left with just the dry paint underneath. So that's what I do next. Now, I am going to do my on top stenciling as well as um, kind of like my stamping. So I'm going to use kind of in this bright color kick right now. So I think I'm gonna use some neon yellow. And yes, you'll see me use my desk quite often because I don't really care if it gets a mess. And I like that it has some color already on it, so sometimes it picks up that extra color. All right, so first I'm gonna use my bubble wrap and I'm gonna get pick up some color. This creates some really cool texture. And yellow is probably not the best color on top of here. I really love the texture that this gives to your page. Right. So that is that part. But the, I'm not done with stamping and stenciling. I also use. I really love like caps because you can make some perfect little circles with them. Are you okay, Aiden? Yeah. All right, so I have a variety of caps here. So you can make some cute little circles with caps. So I'm just gonna grab another color here. I'm gonna do some pink. I'm kind of sticking with the challenge and using some bright colors and stuff. I really love using like things around the house to do my art. Um, it just it makes it more meaningful, and you're not spending a lot of money on um, art supplies because art supplies are expensive. All right, and now I'm going to I use cosmetic wedges to do my stenciling through here. Uh, so I'm going to grab another color. And I think I'm going to contrast this with some black. Uh, so we're just going to put some black on here. Hold on, babe. Go ask Aiden to help you. Okay. Alright. So I'm just going to add some black through my stencil. Like so. And this is metallic black. I love my metallic colors. I don't really think I have many like plain colors. I use a lot of like special colors like the metallics, the neons, and stuff like that. All right. And I 
I just do it until I feel comfortable with the way it looks. And do one more up here. And then I also, like, I'll flip it over and try and get some of that grungy look. Which that one's not going to do it for me. Alright. So there's that. Uh, my next step that I do is my modeling paste or um, sometimes I use gesso through a stencil to kind of give a pop of color but I just picked up this it's from arts art to the sea or whatever the company is and it's modeling paste um, I picked it up at Tuesday morning it was really cheap I think I got it for two dollars so I'm really excited to use it so this will be my first time using it. And I'm going to use this through a stencil. I'm going to add, let's see, maybe we'll add some flowers. And this is a butter spreader. I know there's like knives that you can get, like palette knives, but why spend money if you have tools at home that could work? So I'm just going to spread that across. I do have some plain white modeling paste that I use. Ooh, I like that. That is pretty. All right. That, I love it. I'm getting all excited on here. Sorry, guys. beautiful. Let's go. And because I don't like to waste, I'm going to spit the rest of this back in here. Hold on, babe. Long it is in here. Oh, I love that. That is so pretty. Look at that. Here, I'm going to get that closer so you guys can see that really close. That is so pretty. And there's the top. That's beautiful. All right. Next step is going to be my stamping to add, like, my main focus to my page. So I think today... some flowers around the edge here so I can color these in later and I don't care if they don't work that well I can always I can see the outline so I can go back and draw them in if I want to I feel like I'm out of it I haven't done art traveling in a while. Um, I've been kind of dipping my hands into other things like junk journals and stuff like that, so I haven't had as much time to journal. I forgot how fun it was. <laughs> Alright, so that's what I'm going to do for my stamps. I'm going to do that one, and then I might add a couple of butterflies here. And add them here. Bringing the theme that we have going on here. And one there. Alright. So Alright. And then um, normally what I'll do is I'll color these in. I have some paint markers, but I'm probably going to do that later. And again, all of my paint is like bright colors or neon colors, so I got the neon paint pens. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to color these. I'm not going to color them all, I don't think. I'm going to leave some blank. I love that it's kind of 
take out this grungy look because some of the ink is kind of blending in with it. With it. Aiden, stop. I stamped right on um, one of the black dots that kind of works as the middle of the flower. You can see this, this black mixing in with this pink that's kind of like a purpley color. That's pretty cool looking. And then I'm going to do a couple more up here in the pink and then I'm going to switch colors. I think I'm going to have to do a third video, guys. I'm sorry I didn't expect it to take this long. Um, but normally when I do art journal pages, they take quite a while. So after I'm done with this last flower, I'm going to stop the video and I will come back um, with a third video and we will finish our completed, com ugh, sorry, tongue tied, completed page. Alright, so I'm back and we are on to um, finishing our flowers. So I'm going to switch, I'm going to do some of these flowers in orange. And I absolutely love these Sharpie paint pens. They're really cool. Um, I got them as a gift. So I thought they were fun. Just got a couple more. Um, and then I think I'm going to leave the other ones. Kind of blend in with the background. Aiden, I asked you to please stop. And I'm going to leave my butterflies as well, just because I don't want them to kind of lose interest. So now I need to figure out some inspiration for words. Normally what I'll do is I'll go and I'll find something on Pinterest for my wording, or I will search for something in a magazine. So I will be right back. I'm going to find some some words that I want to put on this page and then I'll come back and show you how I do that. All right, ladies, I'm back. Um, so I didn't actually go searching because there's been uh, a thing that has been speaking to me since I came up with our challenge for this week. Um, and I used the word live. Um, but there's been this other one that's been, um, kind of stuck in my head and it's, dream in color. Um, I've been focusing a lot on my mental health and um, learning that it's okay to not be okay and stuff like that. So I really have been trying to think of bright and cheery things and dreaming in color for me anyhow means, you know, living your life that you love instead of just living. So that's what I'm going to do here. Because it is such a bright and colorful page, I am going to make it dream in color. Um, so there's several ways that I do my writing on my pages. One um, would be to stamp it. Um, and then I do freehand some of my stuff as well. So I think today I'm going to actually stamp. Um, so I'm actually going to put my, my page aside for a second. And I'm going to use these fancy pretty letters. So we're gonna go. Oops. I did it right. D. I'm gonna do dream. I'm gonna dream, do dream and Maybe just dream in all caps and then rest normal. All right, so we have our word dream. And there's my ink pad that goes with this. Oh, it's not in there. Normally I have an ink pad just for my letter stamps, but I don't see it. So we'll just use this one. Which is fine. So, we're going to slap this on the page. And I want this to be the main focus, so I'm going to put it kind of like this. And I'm 
pushing really hard. There's something bumpy under here. I think I have something on another page that's causing it not to push down that well. Um, so you can see some of it's missing. But I keep this pen that is the same thickness of my stamps. So that way if I need to, I can just go back and kind of make it stand out and make sure that it's doing two steps because I don't have two O's so I'm gonna do coal and then OR when I'm done. Sorry guys, I'm all over the place. All right, now we got that right. That's not gonna touch me. I got it. my gel pens which I love and I'm going to use a hot pink to draw I can't so hold on. I can't so my dream Time yet? No, no, I 
So, and I normally choose either inside or outside, so I'm not kind of, I'm not doing both. Alright, so we're popping out dream and then we're going to pop out our color. And you can see my stamp kind of messed up a little bit there, so I'm just going to make that darker. And then I might add a little more color to Dream, just because I want that to stick out the most. Um, If you guys don't use gel pens, I highly suggest using them. They are so fun to play with. You can do so much with them. Um, I color in my coloring books with them. I use them in pretty much every single journal page. So I use my gel pens a lot. Um, they're super fun. And I have a couple of different types of them. I have the souffles. I have the glaze ones, which kind of make things look a little 3D, and I have like just your normal uh, jelly roll pens, but I got them in the brighter colors. I didn't get the, the primary colors. I have the bright colors because, well, I am a colorful person, and I like um, bright colors, as you can tell. And most of my journal pages are really, really bright. So now you can see that dream has completely popped off our page. And I might actually, you know what, I think I'm going to add some color to our butterflies with our gel pens because, well, why not? And so let's color in our butterflies. You guys are really lucky. I am so shocked that my kids are being so good. And now they said something, they're probably going to start acting up. But they let me do this in three sessions without bothering me too much. Alright. That looks pretty. I like it. I'm going to pause this, um, and I'm going to finish coloring my butterfly because, I mean, I think you guys can gather all the color butterfly. So I'm going to color this, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you guys my finished product. Um, so I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. All right, ladies, I am back, and I am done. So I'm just going to bring it in a little closer so that you guys can see the finished product. So it says dream and color and that is my start to finish on how I do my art journal pages. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below otherwise um, happy creating. Bye!